Okay, I want you to look at this. Have a good gander. Can you see anything unusual? If you can't, that's okay. What I'd like you to do instead is blur your eyes a little bit and have another go. If you do it right, you might be able to see something. With the addition of the Deep Dark to Minecraft, we're getting a whole new family of blocks called Skulk. These blocks are way more useful than you might think and have a load of hidden functionality beyond just summoning the warden or spreading Skulk around. And I'm going to show you some of these secrets. So like I said, subscribe if you like what you see. I'm Simply Sark and let's take a look at weird new stuff you can do with Skulk. So just to get you up to speed, this is the Skulk Catalyst. The way it works is if a mob dies nearby, and if that mob would have usually dropped XP, it will instead allow the Skulk to grow further and consume more blocks. Very, very handy for storing XP, but the Skulk Catalyst actually does loads more than just that. You'll notice it does this flashy little animation when stuff dies, and that's because there's actually a block update going on here which means if we hook up an observer, we can turn that into redstone signals. Yes, this is more or less a genuine death detector, which is great to see in the game. There's a ton of fun things you can do with that by itself, but I got a bit curious on what counts as death because there's a few instances in the game where it's not super clear cut. For example, when a pigling goes to the overworld and becomes zombified, that's kind of death. Or if a mob uses a totem of undying, they sort of did die, they just got saved by it. Anyway, I tried this out on mobs that have strange death conditions, like zombies turning into drought. I guess there's just like an alternative wetter version of death. And I didn't notice any interesting results until I tried it with villagers. For some reason, when a zombie converts a villager into a zombie villager, that strangely counts as death to the catalyst, and it triggers a block update. I'm not entirely sure why this event is an exception and the others aren't. It might be because it's an older mechanic, or it could be that because zombies are capable of killing villagers in easy and normal difficulties, the code kind of just counts the villager as dead before spawning in its zombified replacement. What this obviously means is you can use the catalyst as not just a death detector, but also a villager zombification detector. For example, let's say you've got a machine that tries to automate zombie discounts. It's always kind of annoying having to wait around for the villager to become cured, because who knows how long it's going to take. But with something like this, you could set up a system that detects when newly cured villagers have been re-zombified. This could then send you a notification that it's time to give them a new golden apple. This way, you can go do other stuff in your base and only need to check on them when necessary. In my pursuit of trying to find weird game mechanics, I wondered what happened if a mob died, but there was more than one catalyst. Do, do they both claim it? So I placed down two catalysts, gave it a go, and nothing interesting happened. Unsurprisingly, only one of them activated. But then I noticed something odd. Every time I killed a mob, for some reason, the exact same catalyst claimed the death. Every time. It didn't seem to matter which block was nearest. This big old chunk of over here reckoned it belonged to him. I was wondering why the game kept picking this one when I realised what was happening. The game actually remembered what order I placed the Skulk Catalyst in. And it wasn't only limited to two. No matter how many I placed, the game remembered the exact sequence off by half. Now, I love me a secret code, and this could be used in some really fun ways to hide a secret sequence of numbers. That said, while the game remembers the order you place the catalysts, it seems to only last while the chunk is loaded into memory. So if you enter the nether, relog, or unload, reload the chunk the catalysts are in in any way, the game will forget the order. But this actually opens up something really cool. While the order does reset, the catalysts do still have a preference in which order they activate. It seems to prioritise catalysts that are in the chunk the mob dies in, but even if you reload the chunk, there appears to be a natural sequence the catalysts reliably revert back to. So what can you do with that? Well, basically, you can detect when a chunk has been left, then reloaded. For example, let's say you play on a server and you want to leave some kind of surprise for your buddy, but you only want it to activate when they log back on. Well, if you figure out the natural sequence of a chunk, you can do something like this, where you muddle it up. While loaded in memory, this catalyst will never get activated because the other one is currently claiming the XP. You're free to take your time setting everything up and whatever the device is will only become active once you've left and your friend has logged back on. 
the natural catalyst sequence will reset and the XP from the mobs will revert back to the first catalyst. There's loads of stuff you could use this for. It's a super cool mechanic. This block is the Skulk Shrieker. Now, you probably know it as the thing that spawns the Warden, which it is, but it also has some extra functionality that's not quite as obvious. So if you silk touch this guy and place it down somewhere, hoping you've got a sweet new Warden spawner, you're out of luck because player placed Shriekers won't summon Wardens. You might think it just becomes a pointless decoration block, but the Shrieker does actually still do some stuff. It just works slightly differently. Player placed streakers won't scream autonomously like naturally generated ones, but they can still be activated either by powering them with redstone or using a skulk sensor as a middleman. So what exactly is the point of the shrieker? What does it do? Well, it pretty much works as a player detector. You might be thinking the skulk sensor is already a player detector, but the skulk shrieker is actually better at it. Skulk sensors are really good at picking up a variety of vibrations and they can tell the difference between stuff like a block being placed and an entity walking around. But there's still a lot of crossover. So they can't, for example, tell what specific mob is walking about, just that a mob is walking about. Think of Shriekers as kind of like a skulk sensor add-on. When you use them together, they're even more powerful. All you've got to remember is that the detection radius is based on the sensor, not the Shrieker. The Shrieker needs to be within range of the sensor, but you only need to be within range of the sensor, not the Shrieker. As you can see, vibrations not caused by players, like mobs walking about, trigger the sensor, but not the Shrieker. On the other hand, player caused vibrations trigger both the sensor and the Shrieker. By combining the two, you're able to tell not just what vibration occurred, but also confirm if it was a player that did it. Extremely useful. You can actually also invert this idea to create a not a player detector if you only want something to happen if it wasn't caused by a player. There's also some weird behavior with this because if you fire a projectile, that counts as a player action. But if you fire a projectile while outside the range of the sensor, the sensor is activated, but because you're not near enough, the shrieker is not. So on top of all this, you can also create a player distance detector. For example, let's say you've got a shooting range or something and you only want the shot to count if the player is a certain number of blocks away from the target. This system knows if you're cheating because the shrieker only doesn't get set off if you're far away enough. Now we haven't even really talked about charges yet, they're really neat. When stuff dies near catalysts, it doesn't actually use XP, it creates this thing called a charge, which is bigger or smaller depending on how much XP that mob would have normally dropped. For example, a low level mob like a fish will create a small charge, but a blaze or a guardian, which have more XP, will make a bigger one. So what can we do with charges? Now, there's lots of cool high-tech possibilities, but unfortunately, I only have a single wrinkle in my brain, so my first idea is pretty low-tech. You can literally just use this for aesthetics if you want to, because charges make this really nice little particle effect. Example, if you take a cauldron and you plop it onto a skulk block, you can create a functional witch's cauldron. If you fill it up with lava, place a sacrificial mob inside, not only will the mob die, but this will also activate the reaction. I don't know, I just think that's quite cute. So the charge won't last forever, but what you actually can do is use yourself as the sacrifice and this will create a gigantic charge if you have enough XP because players can hold way more experience than most mobs. This lasts way longer than normal. In fact, this could even be used as a sort of level detector. You remember how in Breath of the Wild you have to have enough health in order to get the Master Sword? Well, you could do something similar where a door only opens if you're a high enough level. Here, this block will only bridge the gap between the skulk and the dirt after a few minutes. So if your charge is too small, it won't last long enough to convert the dirt when the bridge finally connects. Another fun idea with charges is hiding secret messages and patterns. So skulk catalysts can only convert certain blocks into skulk, like dirt and stone. If a charge reaches other blocks, it instead just covers them with veins. So if you hide something like slabs and stairs among the regular blocks, when you activate the catalyst, it'll only convert some of the blocks into skulk. 
There's just something really great about secret codes and messages. What I haven't mentioned about charges yet, and this is kind of one of the coolest bits about them, is you can actually move them around. When charges convert blocks into skulk blocks or grow veins, scents or shriekers, this consumes a big chunk of the charge's juice. But if the charge only flows through blocks of skulk itself, the charge just meanders around, and this only uses up a fraction of the charge's remaining power. What's really cool here is you can move the charge wherever you like. In fact, it's even possible to control what direction the charge goes in because blocks like stairs and trapdoors force it to go a certain way. Interestingly, the charge is linked to the catalyst that spawned it. So if anything happens to the catalyst, the charge extinguishes. There's definitely some potential here for wireless redstone or something, I couldn't find a way to detect the charge without draining all the juice, so we'll have to see if they add something new, or maybe someone else can figure it out. If I had to sum up the Skulk family of blocks, they're basically like sensor galore. There's the Skulk sensor itself, which is super powerful, but all these other blocks expand it even further so you can detect all sorts of neat new things. Either way, that's all I've got time for today. Do let me know what you think about the Skulk, and what kind of stuff you're going to do with it. But thanks once again for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed. I have been your Simply Sark, and I'll catch you in the next one.